Hey guys, welcome to another Zulzi Draws video, the channel where I draw because I feel like it. What I've felt like doing recently is very true to the time that we're in. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm designing a mask. We've been in this uh, international situation <laughs> for over a year now. Right now I'm filming in April of 2021. I just got my second Fauci ouchie yesterday and I got my little vaccinated sticker and speaking of stickers that's the second thing I wanted to do today I'm gonna show you a very cheap and easy way to design your own stickers tying this all together I'm going to take my face my art stickers and face masks all into one little video here so it sounds like a lot but bear with me the first thing I did was redesign my little caricature and I did that digitally with the procreate app so if you're ready to see that let's get started so the first thing I'll say about this is you guys saw the original doodle in marker and I'm now recreating that digitally um, with the app Procreate. Procreate something that works great with uh, iPads and tablets, especially if you get the Apple Pencil, the tablet, and the pencil might be a little bit expensive, but Procreate as an app is just $9.99, so I think it's well worth it. As I'm creating this, I start off with a mistake right away. When starting a new file on Photoshop or Procreate or anything that you do, it's important that you try to go with something with a large pixel count. I started with something probably not as large as I should, meaning I could make it the image larger if I needed to, but it would probably look very pixelated if we get that far. You'd rather, it's a better idea to have something be too big that way you can shrink it down later without pixelating it too much. What I really like about this though is you can make it look a lot a lot cleaner. Um, some people like the texture that traditional work makes and I am one of those people as well. But when you're doing something that's going to be recreated and put everywhere and something that's supposed to be recognizable like a logo or an avatar, you want something a little bit more clean cut. So that's what we're doing today. Using Procreate also allows me a lot of shortcuts that I wouldn't be able to get as easily in real life traditional work. First of all, as you can see, when I'm happy with one shape, like if I do one eye, all I have to do is copy and paste it by duplicating the layer and just mirror imaging that duplicate layer. Uh, I did the same thing with the stars in the eyes. I did the same thing with most of actually. So you'll often see the original drawing done with marker I put to the right of the screen so that I could reference it. Digital drawing makes everything so much easier because if I wanted to, I could just move the layer above on top of the original and just trace some of the shapes. And then I'll move it back and make it a little bit different, a little bit cleaner. Something that's going to be present in both of these drawings is the redness. I love to add like blush to not just the cheeks, but the nose and the ears and any part of the body that really has blood flowing into it a lot. In real life, my ears get red pretty often. And you know what I just realized that I didn't do on this sticker that I've said on another video that's so important to me and I forgot it was my freckle. I have a freckle right there. And I didn't draw it on my uh, on my digital one, so that's something I'm gonna have to fix in the future. And all I'm gonna have to do is take my little Apple pencil and go. Can't believe I forgot that. I'm sure you guys didn't even notice, but I notice. <laughs> but yeah, um, doing something digitally gives you that freedom to really hone in on the symmetry of something. So there's obviously gonna be things that should never be symmetrical, like my hair goes off to one side like this. But yeah, I could duplicate the eyebrows, I could duplicate the eyeball. Even literally I split the nose in half when I liked one side of it and pushed it over. And another fun thing about digital work is that you can easily change the hair color if you would like to. Those of you guys that know me in real life know that I change my hair color probably every few months. At least twice a year I'm changing it to something else, but I usually stick with blonde brown and silver. So you'll see me start to play around with some colors and it's just a matter of changing the saturation on the app itself. This is a speed draw. If you go into the Procreate settings, it does allow you to play a time lapse video. So that's why everything looks so much faster than it is. But you guys know me, y'all know this took a lot more than eight minutes. It took several hours. I would occasionally do this on my lunch break. But yeah, I, uh, realistically, if I wanted to, I could change the hair color to be purple or green or blue, which I have done blue hair in the past, so. 
you can see that I'm renaming some of the layers. When you guys start to see me zoom in really close like that, it's because I'm doing some intricate detailing. I'm usually either grabbing something a lot darker to create a fold in the shirt or grabbing something a little bit lighter to show where the light's gonna catch. So you'll see me catch the light on the ears and the jacket. Just keep an eye out for that. One thing I love about this app as well is if I want to get a similar color to one that I already used, but I forgot to create a palette in the beginning of this, which is another feature that it lets you do, didn't do it, I can just press down and hold on the screen and it'll suck up whatever color I'm hovering. So I can reuse that color elsewhere. And then it's just a matter of changing like the saturation or the brightness or whatever. So Procreate's a great app for those reasons. Like I said, I do this on my iPad, so it's portable. I was able to carry this into work. I made sure to save a file of this finished Zulzi um, as it is. But now I'm gonna do something a little bit more fun and I'm going to add the mask to it. And you'll see the way I did that. I used symmetry. I liked the shape I did on one side. I drew a line up to the nose. And when I liked the shape that I had there, I just copied it and pasted it. There it is. Doesn't that look so good? Then I merged those two layers together so that they were one thing and I filled it in with black. But we're not done there. No, no, we're gonna keep doing that same technique. Getting a shape that you like, enough to the point where you can copy that shape and put it onto the other side. I did the same thing with the ear straps. And then I put a, like a line down the middle because, you know, masks sometimes fold if they have a seam down the middle. So how am I gonna make this mask a little bit more personalized? Well. I took my name, Zulzi, and I kind of stretched and played with it until it fit perfectly on one side of the mask. The idea I have in my head is, what if in real life I started walking around with a mask, and on that mask, there's a picture of me wearing the mask, and on that mask that you see what I'm getting at here. So you can see me duplicating the mask Zulzi and shrinking him down. I'm trying my best to kind of fit him on that little mask, but since a mask isn't like straight like this, it kind of curves up against your face. I wanted to tilt the little, the little Zulzi, mini Zulzi to kind of fit. So you can see me struggling with that a little bit. This part is not a speed drawing. I did screen record a little bit of this so that you can see real time how long some of these, this stuff takes me. I'm trying to get him just the perfect size there. And because this is a printed image on a mask, I thought the masked version of Zulzi should, the opacity should be brought down a little bit. So he's a little bit darker, he's printed on a, a dark fabric. I'm cutting the rest of the little duplicate out where he, it doesn't fit on the mask. And then we're gonna do the same process again. We're gonna keep shrinking and duplicating and shrinking and duplicating. And when you start to zoom in here, you can see just how bad the pixels are. Oh, I should not have made the file this small. It's okay, we learn for next time. Zulzi's tip of the day, so make sure you start your digital project with a high pixel count. You can always crop it later if you need to make it smaller. It's just, it's better to shrink if you need to later than it is to expand. I always doodle something in the negative space, whether that's stars or diamonds or little shines. So that's another touch that I thought was very me. I added that around the Zulzi and around my little mini me's head. And then I put that design on the mask. So consistency. So after I finished creating this file with the mask, I just scanned it into an online customization site. This one was called Simply to Impress. There's a lot of them out there. There's like Redbubble, there's Custom Ink. Um, but this one, I, I wanted to order a, quite a few of them and I wanted something cheaper. So uh, Simply to Impress gave me something that wasn't super overpriced. In good faith, they'll be here soon and I'll be able to model them for you. Stepping away from the mask design a little bit here, I did want to show you guys how I started to make my stickers. After taking some old artworks and scanning them into the same Procreate app, I decided to print them on vinyl sticker paper that I got on Amazon. I created a few sheets of mini Zulzi faces, but I'm going to get into that later. After letting the ink dry for a while, I used a UV resistant clear coating spray and let that dry for a little while. I then spent a good few hours cutting out each sticker individually, leaving about a 3mm border around each one. For some of them, I even played with the idea of having a black border behind the sticker itself. I enjoyed having such control over the smooth curves of each cut. This is going to help me a lot later because it's going to be a lot easier to peel and stick. 
Now, I am aware that there are companies and phone apps that are happy to take your design and turn them into stickers for you, but I found that not only was this a very cheap option for myself, but I was very proud at the end result knowing that I've done all of this on my own. And who knows, maybe one day I will utilize one of those apps. I'm certainly not against it. But I did just put that kind of control into a company to do my mask, so I wanted to do something different this time. I decided to add my own stickers to the collection that I had already started on the back of my iPad, and I'm so excited to see what the rest of my family and friends do with theirs. Some people, like my mom, put them on the back of their phones. I saw some people putting my face on their water bottles and their cups. I know that there's little mini-me's hiding around people's kitchens. Someone even took me to the beach with them, in a socially distanced way, of course. And some of my personal favorite places to see my face being stuck is on the back of someone's magic card stack and on the underside of someone's skateboard. Even though this was a long and not so easy process, you guys made me so proud to see my hard work pay off. Well, thank you for watching that process. It's really fun to see what you guys did with these stickers. Thank you for participating. This is what I did with one of mine. This way, if I lose my phone, people will be like, oh, I know that guy. I'm hoping to be making more of these stickers in the future. I'm really hoping that I won't have to wear a mask this much in the future, but if I need to, I will, and I will design more. Speaking of which, these masks finally did come in the mail. Yes, it was a long, painstaking process, but seeing my friends and my family members wearing it so proudly makes it much worth the wait, so thanks again. I plan on going back through my old artwork and making some of those into stickers. It's a lot of fun and I really encourage you guys to try to do it for yourself. If you have any more ideas for me today, please comment them below. Don't forget to hit that like button before you head out because it means a lot to me. And subscribe for more updates on these stickers. And if you want to be one of the first to know, hit the bell icon and all of the other things that YouTubers say. We talk about the masks, we talk about uh, vaccinations, go get vaccinated. We talked about stickers, we talked about digital artwork and Procreate. I hope you learned something. I think that's everything. I think we're golden. Bye guys. Look at that. I'm getting the hang of this camera a lot more.